Gentlemen, what is going on today? My name is Ryan Mickler. I'm your host and the founder of the Order of Man podcast. And of course, this movement that is literally spanning the entire nation, the entire country and the entire world. We're excited about the growth uh, and it's pretty, uh, pretty exciting, like I said, to see the the curve of our growth and to see how many people we're reaching. And it isn't really about the growth necessarily. It's about the amount of men that we're serving. And as we serve more men to help them become better fathers, husbands, business owners, community leaders, then I think in turn, that's going to change communities. That's going to change neighborhoods. It's going to change states and countries and eventually the world. And I envision a time where we're reaching millions and millions of men across the world who are all stepping up in powerful ways, showing up for their family and their friends and their people and working hard and, and standing up for what's right and true and good. And that's what we're doing here in this podcast. So we do interviews. Uh, I've had Terry Crews and Matthew McConaughey and Tim Tebow and Jocko Willink and so many other incredible men on the podcast. We field your questions on Wednesday. And then of course, today is your Friday field notes where I'm sorry, you get to hear from me and some things I've been thinking about from throughout the week. And today I've been thinking a lot about presence. Actually, over the past couple of weeks, I've been thinking a lot about being present in the moment. Uh, it is a it is a skill that not all of us can and or have developed very well, uh, but it's a skill that I'm trying to improve upon. And I've noticed that as I'm more present in the moment, not wrapped up in the past and not too overly concerned with the future, that there's a new sense of joy and fulfillment in what might seem to the casual onlooker as seemingly insignificant moments in, in time and life. And they're not. They're not. Everything is significant. This conversation, you listening to this, the conversation that you might have with your wife or your girlfriend, uh, the conversation you're having with your children, uh, watching their, their sports games, going on a hike, going on a walk, going on a bike ride, even doing emails that maybe seem mundane and monotonous. There is no insignificance to any of that but it requires us to be present in the moment and fully engaged. And that I think leads to a life of joy and fulfillment. So before I get into some specifics on this, I do want to let you know that if you like what we talk about here in the Friday field notes and you want more information uh, or you want to dive deeper or you want to work with other men who are improving their own lives in very much the same way you have a desire to then check out the iron council. That's our exclusive brotherhood. And I'm happy to tell you that we will be open in about two and a half weeks as of the release of this podcast. So go to orderman.com slash iron council, get signed up so you can be notified when we open in the middle of June. Again, that's orderman.com slash iron council. All right, guys, let's get into this. Uh, the reason I brought this up is uh, last weekend, I took my kids on a local hike and it's not a very difficult hike. It might be maybe a mile, maybe a mile and a half up and then a mile and a half down. And at the end of this hike, there's some pools that we can play around in and found some frogs and tadpoles and just, you know, really had a good time. And if you've been listening to this podcast for any amount of time, you know that the last year of my life has probably been the, not even probably, it has been the most challenging time in my life uh, due to some personal circumstances and, and situation. And I'm really not going to get into it today because I feel like we're beating a dead horse at this point. If you are curious about what I'm talking about, you can go check out previous podcasts but needless to say, it's been a very difficult time. And I've had people ask me about joy and happiness. And I used to scoff at those ideas because I didn't believe that that was the goal of life, to be joyous or to be happy, um, to be disciplined, to be fulfilled, sure, but happy and joyous, no. So I found in my life that I was lacking a lot of joy. I was lacking a lot of happiness. I wasn't smiling as much. I wasn't laughing as much. I wasn't as light. I wasn't as fun as maybe I was one once was when I was younger and there haven't been a lot of joyous days in my life over the past year. Now I'm not complaining to you. I'm not whining to you. I'm telling you this because that hike that I went on with my kids was one of joy and, and happiness. And again, I know it seems small. It might sound trivial to the casual observer, but it wasn't. It was a really good day. And I spent the next couple of days wondering why in the midst of some hard circumstances for myself and a lack of joy in my life, why that was such a good day. I came to the conclusion, at least partially, that the reason that was a good day is because I was fully present in the moment. I tend to be somebody who is focused and driven and determined and goal-oriented and I want to get shit done. 
like a lot of you listening to this podcast. You want to get it done. You want to lead your families well. You want to grow your business. You want to start a business. You want to pay off debt. You want to build wealth. You want to have all the things. And, and I think those are worthy goals. Those are worthy ambitions and desires. But if you're anything like me, what that ends up doing is it creates a lot of anxiety. It creates a lot of frustration, even at times, or even feelings of inadequacy because we're not along the track as far as we'd like to be. And I've realized that I don't want that anxiety in my life. I, it's not to say I won't be driven. I, I don't think you could take that out of me if, if you tried. I think that will always be in, in my DNA, etched into my soul, like it will for many of you. So I don't think we ever, really, ever can really remove that. But I'm, I don't want that much in my life. I don't want that anxiety. I don't want that constant grind. I do want to be happy. And I do want to find joy and, and fulfillment and meaning and satisfaction in my life. So it's a constant balancing act. I'm, I'm sure you guys are well aware. But one thing I've found is that over the past several weeks as I've tried to find more joy and happiness in my life, that the key to that for me and unlocking that has been to be present in the moment, to let go of what has happened in the past, uh, to not overly concern ourselves with the future, and just to be fully immersed in the experience that we're in right now. I want you to consider for a second, you listening to this podcast, how many other things are you doing right now? You might be listening to this podcast, you might be at the gym, you might be mowing your lawn, you might be, who knows, maybe somebody's talking to you right now, or maybe somebody would like to talk to you right now, but you're in, in this podcast, and how many other things in our lives are going on? We, we hear about multitasking all the time, and it's like, do this, and do that, and do this at this time, and this at this time, and look, I get it, we're getting shit done, right? But at what cost? What is the expense? Well, our own sanity, and our own well-being. And I'm learning to be present. If I'm here with you guys on this podcast, I'm not checking texts. I'm not dinking around. I'm not doing other things. I'm prepared. I've got my notes here. If I'm with my kids, I try to be as present as possible. Put the phone down. Don't be distracted by other things. Be engaged with them. Ask them questions. Laugh, joke, play, and have a good time with them. Uh, it's been really powerful in my life. So rather than yap at you about all this stuff, what I'd like to do is share with you some strategies how you can be more present in your life so that you can have the joy and the fulfillment and the wonder and the connection with other people that I know, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you want in your life. So number one is we really need to learn to be as efficient and effective in other avenues of our lives. One of the things that I struggle with is patience and well, patience, <laughs> um, when, when people come to me and ask for my attention, that could be one of you, or it could be, um, you know, a loved one, it could be, it could be my kids who want to play, uh, and they ask for my attention. If I am not efficient and effective in getting my work done outside of those conversations, I've noticed that that anxiety and Worry and concern spills over into other facets of my life, and that's where I grow impatient. I grow impatient because I'm not getting the work done over here, and because I'm not getting the work done over here, then it bleeds over into other facets of my life, like my home life, for example. But I've noticed that when I kick ass at work, I, I, the day before I've, I've got a plan, I come into the office, I've got my list, I crank out my list, I'm super effective, I'm super efficient, I don't let distractions get a hold of me, and I just crank through my day at 5, 6 o'clock, whenever I happen to check out for the day, I, I'm home, and I don't have anything else to worry about. I'm not worrying about work, I'm not worrying about those unanswered emails, I'm not worried about my boss crawling down my throat because I didn't hit the deadline. We're not worried about those things because we know we know we did everything that we could to make that workday, for example, as effective and efficient as possible. And what that does is that, that unlocks the handcuffs that you put on yourself, the emotional, mental handcuffs that we put on ourselves so that we can be fully immersed and present for the people that we love. That's your wife, that's your kids, that's your friends, that's your neighbors, that's your community members, whoever it is that you're working to serve. You're more effective in serving them if you learn to be effective and efficient at work so you can check out. Number two, you have to learn how to set boundaries. You've got to learn how to set boundaries. We've got to have yeses and we've got to have nos. We've got to know what our line is and where 
it sits and we have to know what we're going to do if people cross that line and we have to be able to enforce those boundaries. And when people say, hey, can I have your attention to do this thing? We should constantly be weighing that against what we could otherwise be doing. If a friend invites you to go on a, um, <clears throat> well, here's, here's a great example. A friend of mine sent me a text uh, just a couple of days ago and it was for a, a local mud run that they're doing in the next week and a half. And I would love to go do that. I happened to have my kids that weekend. And so I, I thought, you know, I'd love to do that. But if I do that, then I won't be with the kids. So that's a boundary, especially when I have them half of the time. It's a boundary that I have. So I wasn't going to be able to do that. Well, come to find out, the kids can actually register for it as well. And so we're going to go do that as a family. But had the kids not been able to register for that, I would not have done that. I would have liked to have done it, but I would not have done it because that's a boundary. That's something that I've established and I have in place and I don't cross those boundaries unless there's some sort of emergency or risk associated with it. I do not cross those boundaries. I know it's important. It's in my calendar. It's all booked out. It's all documented and written down. And all I have to do now is follow the system. But so many of us make other people's problems our priority and they're not. I know that we want to serve. I know that we want to help. I know that we want to be kind and gracious where we can, but other people's problems don't have to be my priority. Now, I, I can make them my priority, but I want to be deliberate and intentional about when I should and when I should not. So what are your boundaries? It could be as simple as you don't bring the phone in the house or you don't check the phone. It could be as simple as every single night we have dinner as a family. That's a non-negotiable. Like there's all sorts of little, again, little seemingly insignificant things that you can do that are non-negotiables that you do every single day and you don't let anything else get in the way. And that's going to allow you to be more present because you're going to have the routine and you're not going to have a bunch of stuff distract, distracting you Excuse me, from what is important. Uh, number three, speaking of distractions, is you do have to eliminate distractions. Okay, We are filled, we are inundated with distractions everywhere you turn. From being on that little device of the phone, that's a distraction. If you're using it as a tool to build your business, it's not. But if you're on there dinking around, playing around, playing video games, whatever. I don't know what the video game is these days, but whatever video game people are playing on their iPhone and that's what you're doing, that's a distraction. If the TV is running in the background, that's a distraction. If CNN or Fox or whatever your poison of choice is when it comes to those networks is up in the background and you know, you're trying to do your work, but you're hearing this like constant barrage of negative information about what's going on in the world. That's a distraction. If your door is open and you're allowing your colleagues and coworkers to come in and out whenever they feel like it, those are distractions. We cannot have those distractions in our lives because it takes away from, there's a cost associated with it. We, we, our time is finite. Our energy is finite. These are things that cannot be duplicated. They cannot be replicated. You can't create more energy. I mean, that's a scientific principle. You can't create or destroy energy. Energy is just transferred. So if you want to look that up with, with regards to physics, you can look it up. But it applies here too. You're not going to create new energy. It's already there. And all we're doing is we're transferring it to things that we say are important. So if I, if I believe my family is important, then I'm going to transfer the energy I have into my family. If I believe even subconsciously that my work is more important than my family, then that's where it's going to go. If being distracted by the news because I get trapped in the drama and I like that and it entertains me, then that's where my energy is going to go. So I don't want my energy to go anywhere else. I want it to remain compact and tight and focused on the things that are in front of me in the moment. So if you feel yourself getting pulled on a lot of different directions, which creates a ton of anxiety for me, and frustration for me, so I imagine it does for you, then you've got to cut the strings for those other things that are pulling on you. TV, electronics, games, maybe even vices like gambling or pornography or alcohol or whatever is distracting you from being fully engaged and present in the moment. Uh, number four, this one is huge. A lot of people don't talk about this. This is huge, guys. If you're like me, and I don't know you, but I'm just saying if you're like me, we have a tendency of getting inside of our own heads. I might be sitting down and watching a, uh, my kids really like Rio and Rio 2. Those are the cartoons they're watching right now. So I might be sitting down with my kids watching this movie together, cuddling with my kids and playing or laughing at jokes and just having a good time. And then in my head, I start thinking about that email or 
I start thinking about, oh man, what do I have to do tomorrow? And then if I let that sit and grab hold, then all of a sudden I'm up off that couch. I go away from cuddling my two youngest kids to coming in here to my office to send an email out or to check my schedule. I can't be doing that anymore. I don't want to do that. I shouldn't do that. It's not fair to them and it doesn't foster the kind of relationship I want with them. But that said, I found it very valuable to purge things from our minds because if we just let it sit in there like an echo chamber, it just bounces around and echoes back and forth and back and forth and you can never shut it off. So the best thing that I've done is I've got journals uh, in a lot of different places. So I've got one here. Um, I've got a few journals here in my, my desk. Like I keep journals everywhere. I even have a notepad on my phone for notes that I might think of. So, for example, if, um, if I'm sitting there watching a movie with my kids and I remember, oh, you know what? I forgot to call John. I'm not going to just let it bounce around in my brain because that's taking up energy and space. I don't want it to. And I'm not going to go call John, but I might grab my phone and just pull up a folder, a note folder, and, and just write in there daily tasks and, and just write in there, hey, call John. If I'm laying in bed at night and I start thinking about this specific email that I forgot to send out or, or this, uh, this invoice that needs to be taken care of, I'm not going to... I'm not just going to sit in there and just let it bounce around all night in my brain because I won't get the sleep that I need. So I grab out my phone or I grab a little field notes by my nightstand, by, on my nightstand by my bed, and I just document that. Just write it down. Hey, send invoice. And then it's, you purged it. It's no longer in your mind. You don't have to think about it. It's not occupying space. So you can go back to whatever you were doing, focused in whatever you're doing, and then you know you're not going to forget it because it's written down. Have you ever had an idea where you're like, oh, this is a genius idea? Uh, but I can't write it down, so I'll just I'll remember it. And then two hours later, you can't for the life of you remember what that genius idea was, what that million dollar idea was. Isn't that wild? So write it down, purge this stuff from your mind, and get out of your mind so you can get into what you're into. And guys, the last thing is pruning and weeding. Okay, it's really important that we prune and weed our lives. Um, you know, I'm looking outside here at the trees in my backyard. And it's a big, beautiful, full tree. I think one's an ash tree. And I think they're actually both ash trees. Different species, but I think they're both ash trees. They're beautiful. They're big. They're shaded. They're, they're mature. But they get a little unruly at times. And so occasionally I might run outside and I might saw a limb off so that it doesn't impede my view or it doesn't get down into where we might be playing baseball or catch or something like that. But it requires attention is what I'm saying. It, like Even the things that are good, like these beautiful trees I have out back, they're, they're not all good. <laughs> like, they require maintenance. They require pruning. They require attention. And the same is true about our life. You're going to have things creep up in your life that are going to take a little hold of your life, even just to a small degree periodically. And unless you're vigilant and aware of pruning and maintaining and weeding, getting rid of things, not allowing certain things to come into your life, those are going to start to take over. It's a lot like in finances. Uh, one thing I see a lot with regards to people making mistakes with their finances is number one, they just don't track their money and their expenses. And when you start to break it down and actually look into it, you'd be amazed at how many subscriptions people have. 50, 100, 200, 500 plus dollars worth of monthly subscriptions that they aren't using. It's the Disney Plus and it's the Netflix and it's this one service that you used one time and it's the free trial that you signed up for that automatically rolled over into a paid membership and you don't even use the dang thing. You probably have at least a couple of hundred dollars a month in subscriptions that you're not even using. You need to prune it. You need to get rid of it because that's sucking up your financial resources. The same is true with regards to your time. People have weaseled their way into your life. Activities have come in that are unimportant. People are making their problems your priority and they're doing it consistently and you've allowed it to happen so now it's becoming a regular thing. Get out the shears, get out the saw, prune that shit down and make sure that what you're doing is only what you ought to be doing. I'm not going to tell you what that is. It's not my place to tell you what you ought to be doing but it's my place, I think, to encourage you to only focus on what you believe you ought to. And you can let the rest go. That's hard when there's some societal standards or norms that say you have to be engaged and present in everybody else's business. You don't. You have to be engaged in your business. And you have to learn to take care of your people. 
but you can only do that if you have the capacity to do it. So guys, those are my five rules for presence, for being more focused, for having joy and happiness in your life. I know I took, even with regards to happiness and joy, kind of a strategic tactical approach, but I think the more strategic we are about this, the more room it leaves to just enjoy. Let the moment go where it's going to go. Not have a desired outcome. That's a, that's a bonus, I would say, is let go of the hidden agenda that you have for things. So, for example, if you're going to go on a hike with your kids, you might, you might say to yourself, well, we're going to do it the fastest we've ever done it before. Okay. I've said things like that, and I believe things like that. And I believe also there's a time and a place for it. And there's also a time and a place that is not appropriate for that. So get rid of the agenda and think to yourself, you know, my only agenda is to be present in this moment and let it go. Just let the height go where it goes. If you make it to the top, great. If you don't make it to the top, who cares? If all the kids get distracted or they get tired or they get angry before because they're, it's hot, or like, who cares? Just be present. I'm working on it. I don't have this all figured out, but these five tips have helped me, and I hope they help you. All right, guys, if you have any other advice, please let me know directly because I need it in my life. I'm sure a lot of other guys do as well. You can email me at ryan at orderman.com. Uh, or preferably, you can hit me up on Instagram, shoot me a direct message, let me know what you're thinking, and uh, I, I try to be pretty good about responding to those things. Outside of that, guys, told you about the Iron Council. If you want to talk more about presence, you want to learn about next month, leadership under crisis. That's what we're going to be covering in the Iron Council with uh, about 1,200, a little over 1,200 other men who are all working to improve themselves. All right, guys, I'll be back next week. Until then, let's go out there, take action, and become the men we are meant to be.